So, we're broadcasting live. My name is Christoph Kemper, founder of Link Research Tools, and I welcome you to the LLT Site Clinic. We have a very special guest today, Bastian Grimm, founder and director of Peak Ace, very popular, very well known, all services digital agency out of Berlin. And he should be here in a moment as a guest. And here we are. Bastian, how are you doing? Christoph, good, how are you? Good to see you. Wow, it's same, been a same. while. It it's been, been a while. while yeah. And Indeed. yeah, I look forward to an interesting discussion and interesting sites. You saw we have a list of uh, like uh, 45 different sites that we yeah, kept from lot. this week and from the previous week. And I always write that people should actually join to, to, to give us their input and their questions because this is what this is about. You know, the site yeah. clinic format. Yeah. On these conferences, people show their site, have their questions, we tell them. And th this interaction is something that I've been missing for the last couple of years at conferences. I don't know when they... Stop yeah, the that. format kind of stopped. Yeah, you're right. I agree. I guess the format kind of uh, disappeared a bit for whatever strange reasons. I recall we've been doing this for uh, a lot in the in the yeah. past. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And maybe on smaller conferences, I remember some niche conference in Vienna. Maybe this is n not for the big conferences, or maybe people didn't want to show it. I, 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 I seriously, I have to think about that a, a little bit more, but uh, it's a very, very popular format where people keep coming back and we got some guys like Mark or Philip or Eric who come back over and over again to these shows. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll expect a couple more showing up very soon. We have one guy who should be here from... Um, Todd is not here, who asked me specifically to talk about redirect chains and redirect. Okay. So um, if you want, I can quickly do this now, but I would rather wait for him to maybe join to see it so we can dive right in with the first site because that's what the site clinic is about and a little bit of yeah, a, absolutely. a primer. Um, I'm going to share my screen. You guys who've been here, you know the thing with a Q&A panel. You can ask questions. You can come in via voice. And yeah, I would ask for a show of hands if any of you wants to have his site shown really first. Because otherwise, I'll just try the randomizer here. <laughs> Let me share the screen of uh, yeah, the randomizer. Yeah, 45 sites. Massive. And they're all prepared. We all ran a detox. Marcello Kotz with iMobile. Is this guy here? No. I don't see him. Let's do another one. Patal with Habervip. You here? No. Okay. Oh, well. Pain, link building, site structure. No, that's not a site. Jordan, medically billing PHR. Third try. Ha, huh, here's Mirai from Hesab Kudu. He's saving us. And this is the guy we're gonna look at. Guys, if you see that the guys that we draw are not here, just jump in in the Q&A and we dive right in. Okay, so what's your pain Mirai? Can we talk? Can I put you on the microphone? Hi. Hi, Hi Mirai. Hey. Hi, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So can you tell us in a couple sentences, what is your pain with this website? What um, do you have some, some serious uh, objection about one topic that we should look into first? Um, well, um, we are a website about um, banking and insurance products, and they are like comparison websites. Uh, well, our main problem is, you know, of course, with SEO, just uh, fighting for the number one, number one position in Turkey. And uh, we believe that perhaps with backlinks, we're still a bit weak, and we are looking forward to 
points that we can you know work on in general yeah as, as a result of Turkish, i don't know it will be if it will be super meaningful for you but uh, i can try to um provide translation in our Okay, your sound was a little bit breaking up. I'm not sure if I got it all. Bastian, what about well, you? Well, what, what I understood is that uh, I think she's looking more for like a, a, a general uh, recommendation and, and points on uh, what, what they can improve. And I think uh, the, other, the other note was that, uh, um, well, it's obviously, I mean, natively in uh, Turkish. So um, we might have some challenges there, but I guess we, we figure our way around, I think. <laughs> that, with with the anchor text, yeah. Uh -huh. No, but I clicked on auto translate here just for the viewers yeah. to, to look yeah. at the site. And where we, where we need your help is, of course, for the classification. However, what we see right now here in the anchor text breakdown is that the brand name, the website brand name is there and I, I see the most popular one just by the numbers being a domain variation with a .co. So it seems like we may have something to prepare. Oh no, that's even- That's interesting. That's even more confusing to me, right? We, we got a, a hesapkudu.com and we got a Hesap Kudu, I hope I pronounced that right. It has a kudu.co. Yeah, um, that's, that's right. <laughs> okay. Is that, uh, is that also your domain or is that, is that something that you don't own? No, we don't own that. And that's weird that it shows up as the most popular anchor text because we are super careful with our anchor text all the time. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's mm -hmm. from backlinks. Yeah. You yeah. seem to have a lot of these pretty, pretty weird ones. Let me, uh -huh. let me rearrange this a little bit here. Uh, so we can look at the most important ones, the link crawl state, maybe look at the follow no follows here. Okay. So there are some links that don't seem to have an obvious problem because they have been uh, deleted or are at least uh, uh -huh. not active. But when we, oops, let's go back. But when we when we uh, look at the active ones with this anchor text still, there's a lot of risk in these links. So these are all spammy right. links from uh, what looks like forums here. Print thread is a typical typically, mm -hmm. typically pattern in forums. I see, all right, let's look at the domains where these are coming from. Cool. It's pretty wide distributed, actually. Yeah. That looks like a lot of, uh, well, also Turkish sites. I think I, I, I recognize the Turkish uh -huh. in here. However, there are some popular sites using that anchor text as well. Medium. Well, let's have a look at those maybe and yeah. see what's going on there. Maybe it's a cutoff potentially. But so many. It's oh, Hesab many, huh? oh, hesabkudu.com. Uh -huh. Oh, we got tricked. I said anchor text contains. Contains, not equals. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> classic. Okay, so let's change this filter. Okay, and then medium is gone. Okay, so go back one step. Yeah, that yeah. looks uh, even spammier, right? So when right. I just see these domain lists yeah. here, this looks like... Alexa Scraper. Alexa Scraper or maybe uh, some... some uh, uh, the Globe spam. And when we get rid of these, there's actually a... A huge amount. It's still of... equal, Christoph. It's still equals. Yeah. It's not. It's oh yeah, it's equals. You're right. Yeah, no, it's, it's, equals. Right. it's equals. Yeah, it's equals. Mm -hmm. And so here we got a lot of these from uh, links that you had that are deleted now or at least not present on that specific page. And right. when we look at these domains, they look actually exactly like the ones that we just disavowed except that maybe when we would recrawl that whole site again in a moment, in an hour, this was crawled on maybe two days ago, 
that we would find another link on this domain on another subpage. Maybe not domain list 71, but domain list 72 yeah. or something like that. Right. So from what we see here, um, <laughs> we can try hard to find uh, a good link in here when we look at our source page, Power Trust. So. My guess is it's going to be hard to find one. <laughs> I always try. I always try. You yeah, know, yeah, no, it's, it's so fair easy. Enough. That's fair enough. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so easy enough. to disavow all these links, and you know, sometimes mistakes happen. And you know, we even implemented a, a, a rule, an automated rule that reminds you about links that you disavowed that are maybe good now. But uh, when yeah. I look at that here, um, can not a single one. Not a single. You can one. blindly, blindly disavow them on the yeah, main level. Yeah. Yeah. And this is uh, twelve hundred domains on a root root domain level in this case, because this is obviously Alexa, Globe, etc., scraper spam, that we just want to be sure is gone. Maybe right. Google we, takes care of some of them, but. Uh -huh. Yeah, we um, regularly disallow some uh, domains, but mm -hmm. it seems like your tool uh, has been, uh, is showing a lot more domains that I was able to find. Yes, uh, this is because we uh, combine all these 25 data sources and any data sources that you provide, you know, you can connect your search console and these uh, other products like Ahrefs or Majestic or SEMrush, and then we combine all of that together. But uh, we, for, for the audit part, we specialized on taking whatever we can get, even the so-called deleted links. So when you go to Majestic, for example, by default, you wouldn't even see these links because... Right. Um, the question is, do, do you want to see links that have been there? And for a link audit, this is actually what you want. And our recommendation is then always to go and um, do a proactive disavow, because we've seen these domains, they keep, you know, just changing all the time. And so uh, when you know a domain is spammy, you should just disavow it. Uh, and that's easy. And, and so this is because we specialize on it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, did you send us a disavow file to to include in this audit your existing one um i yeah i think i did ah okay okay yeah yeah it's it, it's not a big problem if you did not i, I was just curious mm -hmm. um when we look at some of these keywords ankara credit is uh, looks like obvious money term to me right right that's credit um, in, in ankara and um I don't like the deep red in here. Not, not only <laughs> is this a lot. You know, you're you're a fan of green, right, Christoph? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it looks, on the one hand, this would be some optimized links for for phrases that you want to rank anyways, but also some comment spam from the past that maybe helped you in the past, and is possibly pulling you back now. So when you have a link, like on these Chinese domain, um, that is even going to a landing page here on Yappi Credit, Subala, Ankara, that does not exist anymore. You would expect that the link, the spammy link that goes to the 404 page doesn't count anymore. Only when Google has crawled this link. And this doesn't look like a link that Google is fond of crawling very often. No trust <laughs> at all on a super shady domain. And this is why we recommend to disavow links like that as well, and then run Link Detox Boost to force Googlebot to crawl it once after the disavow is there. So this is something that uh, we would recommend here. Um, should we look for a nice link? I mean, something of uh, value? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Anne Popo. Sana to sure. Default parallels plus. Okay, this looks like. Yeah, that's a landing, a default domain landing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so while these links are gone, these three here are maybe the ones that I would keep if we, you know, have some high hopes. This about the remainder. And then with these three here, just say that we, uh, you know, maybe look into this later and give it a question mark. This will show up in your profile 
uh, and your domain overview here in the issues. So some of these things that we do right now can be done uh, a lot quicker. You know, for instance, virus or malware links is something that you shouldn't be looking for actively. That was what we recommended in the past. But when we uh, show some of these on a regular basis, uh, my recommendation is to get rid of any of these. And I think, Bastian, you were one of the first guys who made an experience with the malware links, right? With the warnings. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's, uh, it's always a matter of how, which way you turn them, right? But uh, you're, you're totally <laughs> correct. I think um, we, that's one of the things I was just going to add on this. Like, I think for me, like whenever it's, it's kind of classified as, as harmful, um, mm -hmm. then it's something that, that, you, that you want to get rid of asap because you know at a certain scale i mean for you know three four five of them it's not going to hurt I mean, yeah. it's not good to have them but it's not going to hurt but it's going to be yeah. if the scale is going up then you have an issue so that that i would do straight away what i what we tend to do for those obviously though is we kind of put them on a separate list because uh, oftentimes then owners fix the domain at some point and then those domains might be at some point kind of regaining some of the values if they have mm -hmm. been hacked in a sense of like mistakenly hacked and then classified as malware, which at the time they are, but then, you know, moving forward three months in time, then all of a sudden they might have some, some, some kind of value again. So I think what Christoph was saying earlier, like auditing, uh, like existing disavow files on a, on a regular basis makes, makes a lot of sense actually to just kind of be sure that there's no stuff in that at, at some point kind of has gotten any, any value again. Mm -hmm. So we would, for instance, set a tag, to do a follow up here and uh, exactly, yeah. recheck yeah. Uh, in yeah. 2021 20, or whatever. Something like that. You, or, yeah. You, you yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's actually something that we could automate, you know, like a reef, like a follow up on link disavows. Yeah, based on, based on certain criteria where we use mm -hmm. the filters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think in a way we have this already now because now let's see if we have. Um, Links disavowed that could potentially be good. Uh, no, not in this case. Sometimes when we have a, a guest here, a patient with, that we look at the website where we upload the existing disavow file, then it uh, mm. jumps right in here and says, just like this one, strong no follow links that you could look into. Uh, we, we give you a warning about links that are disavowed that are maybe good already. So yeah. in a yeah. way we try to automate that. However, if you keep your own tabs and own lists of, of links to, to revisit, that's even better. The more own structure you bring the more uh, utility you get I think out yeah. of the system because those links you could upload again to link uh, research tools so we create these tags even you know a year later if you bring them okay so there's more stuff to look at here however what um, strikes me is that we have a fairly low risk already you know yeah. when we when we did some bulk uh, clean up here, obviously we came down from the 2000 to an 893, right? And then on the recalculation, we uh, dropped even more. So it looks like you send us that disavow file, like I asked you before, actually, uh, we would see it here. This is probably where we okay. set up the site and then we applied the disavow file you had already, which is good. And um, what would be interesting is uh, the general uh, market for, for credit and, and, and loans in, in Turkey, you know, how your competitors look like. So looking at your top competitors doing a competitive link detox or just run the same audit for your competitors could help you to understand how bad is the link profile for them. Because Google always says there's only 10 well, not 10 blue links in many cases now, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you just have to be a little bit cleaner. Either more or less, yeah. <laughs> yeah, more or less, right? <laughs> so, um, what I find interesting. But yeah, I think that's a good. I think that's a good advice, right? I mean, the, like looking at the like competitive risk makes a lot of sense. Uh, also, to know kind of how aggressive uh, you can potentially be or can't be. I guess either way is true. Um, especially like in the more, in the more, uh, like, well, the more competitive industries, like, like, uh, you know, fin, uh, finance or FinTech or either way, I think, um, it's, it's, it's still, I would be potentially willing to risk a bit more in terms of like, you know, uh, anchor text variation and whatnot, um, versus then 
you know, like more the old fashioned where it's not that aggressive. So I think uh, having like a comparison at hand uh, makes total sense because like, as you said, Christoph, like the 300 ish risk is, is really low um, mm -hmm. by all standards. So I don't think there's too much. I mean, there's always some stuff that can go, but nothing that's too crazy. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also not something that I'm, 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 I'm worried about right now. Yeah. We're looking at that. We've seen, uh, we've seen other link profiles with four or 5,000 and actually some <laughs> exactly. of them are here to, to look at. And so, um, Something that I want to mention, because just today uh, someone pinged me from a, a Facebook group, I think, who said uh, something along the lines, oh, I, I think, I thought you were only doing link detox, only doing disavows. I had no idea that you also support a link building workflow, that you support to check the quality of the links. And he wasn't aware of our power trust metrics that we have and, and not of the uh, link detox risk that we have. So, of course, let's say a very distant, um, knowledge but uh, something that we have in our software for many years is just um, a link simulator where you could you know even for one link or in bulk simulate a potential link before you have it because here's the thing a lot of people build links and then later on maybe they have a penalty or maybe they you know, build up some risk and then have to do some disavow again. Our philosophy is why do actually do you actually build links that could cause a risk if we can calculate and, and estimate a risk before the link is even built. And because the link profile is available to us now with all this training and all the thumbs up, thumbs down, the disavows, we know exactly how that link profile well looks like. And then adding virtually a couple extra links, you know, even hundreds or thousands to that and saying for each link, if this is a good one or a bad one, is something that high profile affiliates use for many, many years to just weed out um, the bad ones or the, the toxic ones from the good ones when they, for instance, buy links, which I assume is also something that is going on in Turkey, like everywhere else in the world. And uh, this is where the link simulator comes in. And uh, yeah, obviously we got some extra weight. Um, nice demo effect. I love this. You have a live show and check one link and it just hangs. So yeah. <laughs> Classic, huh? Yeah. Oh, let's look further. This is something I wanted to mention here uh, for sure, because it's not maybe not known to, to everyone. Um, but Bastian, when you and I met, I was still big in the link building and the link selling business, right? Yeah. Long, yeah. Before, long before Link Detox was a thing. In that was a long time ago, yeah. Um, we actually ran an own link building agency. And this is how Link Research Tools was, well, created out of yeah. need, out of their own need. And some people sometimes come along and they only know me from the last eight years or so and have no no memory of the orange jacket. Yeah, yeah, from, yeah. I was from, gonna say there's from, a history, there's the a history for that. Yeah. Okay, True. so um, yeah, a couple other things maybe to notice is we spotted 667 links from potential PBNs. These could be some paid links or maybe also a negative SEO attack. And depending on the power here, you know, when these links are all really poor, they are usually some scraper or some some link networks, but they actually look quite decent to me. You know, power trust. What's things. interesting? What, what's interesting though is also that the risk is relatively low uh, in right. that case. Right. And so in this that case, um, these could be legit links. And if that is the case, you should give us a thumbs up to keep training the system. Or if you have a bad, let's say, a bad feeling, a bad memory about them, that maybe some of these links could be, um, could be in bad neighborhood from other people who buy links or sell links. Yeah? And, and this is where the screener would come in, where we as you know, completely new coming in would look at one after the other. Uh, Which is still one of my idea. favorite, one of my favorite tools. Still, I think it's so useful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. So, so you know, for me, I've never 
looked at this market and, and what you spot here immediately is uh, class link. Aha, uh -huh. yep. there's a special class, a special CSS class for link. Yep. It's not obvious, but sometimes you see in the CSS class paid link or advertisement or a sponsor. Then it's uh, very obvious that that uh, is a problem. Yeah, and so, it's the same, huh? Wait, these were two different domains? Looking yeah, it's exactly. all different domains. Yeah, I just had them open as well. Yeah, it's all different domains, but the implementation is all the same. So that obviously yeah. is a pattern to an extent, right? Right, right, right. And this... Um... <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... Okay, I just, you know, what you don't see is my, my hands. I'm using the hands like here in the Tetris or some other arcade game. We can use the cursor to, to just browse and the, this is why it goes so quick. Be aware though, you know, after a couple of thousand sites, it gets really, you know, uh, you get a strain maybe. Yeah, yeah I was going to say your hand starts hurting, um, <laughs> but you can, you can, the good thing is you can use the shortcuts blindly at some point. You can sit there like this and just like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's quite, <laughs> it's, it's very efficient, I have to, I have to say, though. But By yeah, way, I think this is, a, this is the point, sorry, why it came up. I think it came up because of the pattern of how it's implemented, the domain per se, not super strong, but then also it's all kind of all money anchor text, the position, it all says like it's link. Mm, well, I, I think it's questionable. I would, yeah. well, I would not be too overly worried, but that's definitely something that I would be revisiting. I think then again, what we need to consider though, is that yeah, some markets again, um, and, and I consider Turkey to be one of them, including the industries, they just work a bit different. So I'm, I would, I would think that those might potentially still even work in, in, in a region like that. Yeah. 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 I remember talking at a conference in, in, in Istanbul at the SEO SEO conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 2014 or 15 where they asked me what the problem about link directories are because everyone is using or has been using no. them and so no. that was a time when uh, they didn't work really well in the us and in germany yeah that's true i mean we see the same like we do have a lot of like well not a lot but like we work um quite a bit in the uh, mina region as well so like mm -hmm. uh, emirates and, and and the likes and it's it's kind of the same um the, it, they still exist uh, they still seem to pass value um mm -hmm. i mean they exist in the us as well but they just don't work anymore so i i guess um at least for legitimate sites probably nothing to kind of focus on anymore uh, yeah i would i would say all right, then I say thank you for this. Uh, thank you for the example. Of course, we could spend a lot more time on this one and go through all these different cases, but I want to give the next uh, guest a chance and a look at the next site. So thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, here's my randomizer again. Let's see, DDS color animators. So let's close this one. If any of you have questions, now would be a good time to put them into the, the question box, right? And, oh, hi, Jörg. Hi, Eric. Hi, Dragan. Back again, like, what, two weeks ago? Um, yeah, Rolf is not here. Well, let's do that side anyways. DDS calorimeters. Oh, okay. So this is a uh, bit more risk with the 867. Again, we have seen worse, I would say. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, it has, no, it has been worth, worse actually at 1700, you see? So then it we- It would have been we, more fun then. People, you know, that no, follow me this. and follow us have been, you know, yeah, doing yeah. the job pretty yeah. well already so this is where of course rolf if you would be in the show now this would be a, a much better experience for you to ask the questions here and uh, i think we got some feedback as well let me check here real quick um for rolf hang on sites so where's rolf no, no feedback. All right, no. let's look at it anyways. Um, do you know what DDS calorie meters are? Sounds like a dieting thing. Oxygen bomb, uh -huh. okay. What? 
oxygen bomb. <laughs> okay, this okay. is uh, interesting. Health re okay, I feel like someone who goes to the Link Research Tools website. Immediate issue. Lots of words that I don't understand. <laughs> what the hell is a call 3 k and the real PCLA LGR? They build machines, let's put it that way. Yeah, build machines to do stuff. Mm -hmm. Can Laurie meet this? Okay. Yeah, it must be some industrial. Um... But at least, I mean, what's good to know is like, it's, it's kind of, as you said, it's industrial tools. So it's probably kind of more like old fashioned, uh, old fashioned industry. Yeah. Interesting domain here again. Yeah, not overly, you know, over overly competitive. It doesn't I never heard of this word before? DDS. Me neither. Maybe. Should we Google that real quick? But maybe that's that's the issue with us not being native English speakers, I suppose. Ah no, come on. We're pretty good in English. I've I might imagine that there is a German word for that, but you know, I'm just sure, judging yeah. from the picture, have you seen something like that? Ever? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but there's a Pinterest wall. The what oxygen bomb is being promoted on, on Pinterest. Hmm. Ah, well. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. okay. <clears throat> well, well, let's have a look at the links. Maybe that's more. That's more yeah, us than. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, I think it just. So steal these. Okay, come. South Africa, Poland, Org. Okay, at least not the typical crazy spam domains. Hmm. Um. What I found interesting in the overview when you just had it open was that yeah. the anchor text distribution looked really interesting. Not this one, the other one. The, yeah. Um, because the look fragments. at the brand. Look at the brands again. Like dub 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 cal two k dot com, which is yeah. interesting. Maybe domain migration or something. Absolutely. Let's open that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looks All like right. It. So. Ooh, three o x. What what happened there? What happened there? Oh, yeah. we have a redirect chain. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> with a one, two, three, four hops already. So it's one step before we would see an automated warning that this is too much for Google to crawl. And you know what's a shame if you look into the middle of the, like the amount of links there. Yeah, exactly. Actually, amount of links just to the homepage without the dub, dub, dub. And then migrating it to the dub, dub, dub. Yeah, that's what I mean. Here's another one, just merging them together. Would you do an outreach to, to ask people to, you know, change the link to the, to the proper one? I mean, when we do, when we do advice on migrations, uh, we always kind of collect like the link profile first for all the stuff that we are mi migrating um, for, the, for the sake of mainly implementing redirects, to be very honest. But I feel like for... You know the big stuff that you can tr can control, like I don't know, you do a link on Facebook or you link on Twitter. Yeah. That stuff I would that stuff I would do. I think if you're not going crazy with chains and if you just implement one-on-one -on -one redirects, mm -hmm. I am not overly worried anymore about changing links afterwards. What we sometimes do, some clients in insist, and we just do send out one like batch to the strongest I don't know thousand and see what comes back. But yeah. overall, I think also it's kind of a strange pattern, right? So let's say, let's assume everything everything works, and all of a sudden everyone is changing the links manually. I mean, this is also yeah. a bit of a weird one, right? So yeah. I'm yeah, I'm exactly. more like, well, do your redirects right. Don't do it like this, like this, but do the one on one, and then you're fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be one link from Cal 2K to DDS calorie meters. Yeah, and. Uh... But this is a typical one, right? The, the, the hops oftentimes go go wrong when when you have when you have protocol mixes like this one. So yeah. they just migrated the protocol to the new domain, and then the new do, then the old uh, the new domain to the to the protocol, and then yeah, yeah. So that that's what happens there. This is why yeah. redirect mapping up from is so important. Yeah, no, that's really a pity. You see, the original the Cal two K has probably been around for a long while. It has a power trust of 12 and then yeah. the, the two hops in between were just around for i don't know a short time uh, with no 
substantial power being passed on. So I yeah, guess I, 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 I'm not too much worried about the two in the middle. I totally agree. But the, the shame is that the non that the non HTTPS version of the Cal 2K uh, yeah. is going through the loops. This is yeah. this is the yeah. problem in my mind. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And then we got different hostings. So oh, well, at least they're hosted in a similar okay area in London. Um, something that I would recommend right away before we look any further <laughs> is to set up a project for Cal2K because what we may be missing are some good links, but what we may be inheriting are some bad links. You know, it's a, not a very large profile, so that's not even a cost factor or a time factor, but uh, you simply should you know, be sure that you don't pass on any penalties. And sometimes we've seen clients that have been redirecting a lot of domains and it didn't even have them set up in Google Search Console. So some of them actually had manual actions and they didn't see it because it wasn't connected. So that gets really annoying when you work with large corporations and we have that oftentimes and then no one can even access that nonsense anymore. And then yeah. like, so one of the tips that I that I like to give would really help us a lot because sometimes people say like, well, we can't kind of reconnect the old ones, but what you can do oftentimes is you can at least get in like a DNS record and then you can verify them in search console with a DNS verification. That makes it sometimes a bit easier because you only need to talk to operations, but like no hosting and whatnot, but yeah, make sure that you have your inventory sorted and don't do that because yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're missing. You're missing out on, on that stuff. We actually had Natasha here in the previous uh, site clinic last week who couldn't access the previous. Well, there were actually two live sites, and she couldn't mm. even access the files. And we were pulling up PHP errors and all kinds of ugly stuff that was indexed in Google. Mm. And uh, if these things go wrong, I think you shouldn't worry about you know a couple of spammy links. You should you know actually yeah. fix the website first. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that one is running. And in fact, I would recommend to first do a link audit on, you know, what you have redirected and clean that up before you even do the main site. Because we've seen sometimes just a penalty and Home24 was the most popular, the first example found that dropped the penalty uh, after that was changed in May 2013, where these redirects were not a problem before. Well, if you if you recall, I think we both had a long discussion on that topic. It was probably previous to Home 24, but I mean, the issue was that with redirects in the past, you could just rotate out penalties. And then when they fixed that, you could rotate them out with using canonical attacks. So you're, you're totally right, right? I mean, now it's being inherited. So um, auditing auditing what you redirect. Um, and, and I would agree with what you said, like this is th something that you need to do normally before you even migrate, uh, you know, same for off page as well as on page, don't migrate yeah. broken things or legacy, clean it up before you migrate. Otherwise debugging is going to be a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, we have been uh, viewing some content that was uh, not duplicated. It was kind of new on the new site, but there were some old parts of that old mm -hmm. content in the old site. And when we look at this site here, um, it probably has similar problems. Something that we have found automatically here are redirect chains on the target page. So if some migration has been taking place, we, we saw what three hops from the previous domain, yeah. but even on the main domain, we already have chains and yeah, Cal2K is here. Yeah, every Apparently. Yeah, but that's what I mean, right? Like if you if you already migrate that stuff in, it's super hard to see if it went wrong during the migration or if it was there before. So I guess the cleanup yeah. beforehand makes total yeah, you're right, makes total sense. Yeah, look at that. I mean, this link seems to been removed at the mm -hmm. moment. However, we 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 trigger some redirects on the site before we even pull a 404. Yeah, that's so, always lovely. <laughs> so from a user perspective, or even a bot, oh, look at that, three, bomb, 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 index PHP. Yeah, they're, they're flipping around, right? So it's, mm -hmm. HD, it's HTTP, then it's HTTPS. 
No, it's okay. both HTTPS without, yeah. then with dub, 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 and then it's uh, with That's index it. PHP and without index PHP. I think this is like, um, <laughs> I would imagine that the second hop is like an old, it's, it was the old CMS pattern, like with the index PHP, because the new one looks like a WordPress. Um, yeah. So I assume that just because the index PHP doesn't exist anymore, I would, yeah, I would guess that, well, the mapping went wrong or doesn't exist either way. Okay, it's your uh, sale. At least a 14.4, I think that's fairly, I'm, I'm not up to date on WordPress for a year or so, but 14.4 is fairly new. We had a seven or a six in one of the sites last or two weeks ago. Mm. And so that could of course uh, add some extra problems to this, but uh, brr, th these are some technical problems on the website that need to be fixed. And even if we only look at the links, that are up and down today, that are live difference between a couple of review sites. Mm, okay. So, now let's see if we find some, I have some nice prepared filters where we have, for instance, a bunch of known negative SEO domains. <laughs> That's a bit bigger. No, no links here. Well, it's interesting when you when you look at your filter, though. Maybe to just give people a bit of context is, um, and that's what I, I wanted to mention it earlier. I just missed it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what your take on it is, Christoph. But like, I feel when they started rolling out this uh, nonsense uh, top level domains like dot store dot x y z dot whatever it is, yeah. like the amount of order generated links that are pointing around yeah. and are yeah. just absolutely useless uh, went up by times thousands. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys seeing that as well, but just for the yeah. audits that we are doing, I'm, I feel like this is such a waste of time. Yeah, this is why I, I looked at the TLDs here to mm -hmm. begin with. There yeah. are some TLDs that you can... Uh, uh, blindly disavow, yeah. Bl blindly I disavow, yeah. yeah. Because I the agree. links are, it's, it's like a .tk, yeah. <laughs> so TLD. Now, what was the name of the filter? Uh, image links, coupon spam links, domain lists. So there is a a, a, a bit of coupon a dot ga for example. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we got them in here. Source pages from coupon site spam and wallpaper mm. scraper spam. Yeah, that is also really bad. Like we've seen some of the e-com sites getting literally hammered with the image scrapers where you're uh -huh. like, insane, absolutely insane. You know, uh, one of those saved filters, I even made a favorite one here and made it my tab. <laughs> so when it comes to wallpaper spam, I have a tab. <laughs> it's like, like it's a speed dial for spammy links. To... It's kind of sad, isn't it though? I mean, if yeah. you think about it, the amount of like, yeah, it, I don't know. Have you ever run out of curiosity, Christoph? Have you ever run like an analysis of uh, how much the disavow files have been grown in terms of the rows that have been added after that? I think that would be a really interesting number. Ah, over you know time, what I mean? Like, if you look at it, if, yeah, yeah, like on the timeline, I, I yeah. would, I would assume it's insane growth for like on average. See, that would be an interesting graph to add here. I mean, yeah. maybe for the site itself. Like we have yeah. here a growth of links over time yeah. with the risk. And of course the one and last links <laughs> that you have in other tools as well. And the risk over time, but the number of disavows over time is something yeah. that we track anyways, because we got the link yeah. history, you know? Yeah. When we pull that up, we see every single line when it was disavowed, undisavowed back and forth. And so that would actually be available. You think and doing that on a on a on a for the whole user basis would be an interesting. Uh, yeah, that, I would be really curious to see that because I would imagine if you if you find the announcement post when they open up this nonsense with the yeah. with the um, TLDs, then mm -hmm. it, I'm sure it goes up like this. Mm -hmm. I don't understand though why it is, but um, I mean you could have bought like cheap info domains beforehand, anyways, right? But yeah. I feel it's gotten like significantly worse, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. And there are there are new free um, promotional activities mm. by some some of the registers. Good point. Yeah. And whenever that happens, the guys with these scripts just you know 
jump there and they don't even care if these are mm. only free for one year they take it free for a year and then do whatever they want to do with that and it's uh, yeah. uh, something um you know we have a special rule only for the globe which mm -hmm. surprises me i don't see any of the globe links here usually when you have a website that has yeah. been around for a while you have you know the second or third here says a uh, links from the globe that you should disavow but that's not the case here. So somehow maybe they moved on to other patterns because they realized that we have uh, uh, some we have training the, for their sites. Yeah, maybe. Should we have a look at the first one? Because I think that's an interesting one to yeah. show maybe to people like the negative SEO pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so high risk links. Wait, we got the original detox risk here. That would be ignoring the disavow and the detox risk that we have now. So when you do a link audit and you disavow, uh, audit the disavow, you can have them next to each other now. Then in the past, you would run them in two different mm -hmm. modes. But um, something, you know, we look at those, the domains. And just, just see, okay, medicine online says free moss, free moss, moss to work, sale moss? No. Yeah, that's what I thought <laughs> as well. <laughs> okay. Um, there are some domains that have a little bit of trust here, but all of that stuff down here, share a share web page. There we are links. again, like X, Y, Z and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. ML, fragments, anchor text. Follow links. Hmm. So these are links that could be on those scrapers that could be used as a negative SEO pattern. These links are on domains that do not currently resolve. And why is that a problem? You know, you could say the link was there. But we know it was there, but we cannot verify that it's gone. And if you cannot verify that it's gone because it currently returns an error, Google also doesn't take it out of the link graph. And that means whatever effect the link had remains. And we brought it up in a couple of discussions over time. And we always saw that when we disavowed these links, that we could take down the risk in our system and that also the rankings improved for the websites themselves. These are links that are stuck in the system or are still in the system as a Google engineer told me. And so a lot of people think, ah, I don't wanna deal with that stuff. Like like the, per uh, the lady we before uh, also said that she hasn't seen so many bad links, but this is what you know, link detox and link research tools specialize in to find these links. And my recommendation usually is just to fix that by disavowing all of them after doing a manual review like this one before. And the better you know your industry and your competitors, the more likely you will click on fix immediately here for this kind of pattern. Uh, money keywords. Uh, yeah, we got some PBNs, 487, that are probably part of some network that look similar. So what we flag as PBNs takes a lot of different rules that we get asked about a lot. You know, you need to tell me why, blah, blah, blah. But of course, the people that build these networks want to make them link detox proof. And I know from people that build networks like that, that they use link detox and link research tools to, to to bulletproof their networks. So if they don't show up in here, they are perfect. Um, yeah, so this is how it works. And when we go through these sites in the screener, we probably will see something like from the previous site that they have similar patterns, similar templates. Um, I see very... Uh, Looks like listing, like listing pages or something. Yeah. <sighs> this could offer that this could even be some comments back. No, 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 not common spam. Bomb vessel. What's a bomb vessel? Well, I would say the bomb, the bomb thing seems to be a money keyword for them. Although, you know, I, it has a, it gives me a bad feeling, you know, to talk about a website that promotes something with a bomb. 
what is a palm bracelet? <laughs> okay <laughs> what okay so uh, and because technically these links here are also you know a lot of them are deleted the ones that are broken not found unverified we could take and disavow right away so and when we look at the power trust here it's not a single page that has a little bit of link power, a little bit of link trust, not a single one, out of the, what, 468 results. Believe me, when you get rid of them, worst case, a couple moments later, working in the app, you might see a notification, hey, here was one link that we think you should better undisavow. And you can always undisavow maybe an hour a day or a week later. Like uh, we, we heard from Bastian before. How long, uh, uh, re regarding the follow-ups for, for virus links, for example, Bastian, that you mm -hmm. mentioned, um, how long do you give them? Do you have, let's say, a, a rule that you say, okay, we let them disavow for six months and then we look again? No. Is this well, depending well on the client? Yeah, it's it's a bit depending on the on the client, obviously. I mean, what we what we usually do when we when we start working with new domains is that we kind of do one like um, deep cleanup, if you so will. Because I mean, so we depends on what they have done before, right? But so either we take something over, so uh, or we start fresh if no one has has kind of done it before. So we do like this full audit, um, uh, including the disavow, and then. Uh, we just let it sit and usually for most sites we revisit that between either um, you know let's say three to six month time um, and then at that at that run we would also look again at the ones um, that we have marked for kind of a revisit uh, mm -hmm. the tag and then go through them and either we let them just sit or we kind of put them um, we put them on like you know they are there forever uh, either way so that, that both works as I suppose but yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I would say, you know, here we just click on recalculating the detox risk. Oh, I just see that we did this audit by ignoring the no follow links. What is your opinion or how do you guys <laughs> work? Do you ignore the no follows or do you take them into account? You know, this is a, a couple of years old, the story yeah. about, you know, the two different um, no-follow schools. But how has yeah. that changed in the last year, you know, with no-follow 2, where Google said they might count them now? Well, I think the um, immediate danger is the follow links, uh, mm -hmm. uh, obviously. So I think um, if you're looking at very, very large profiles, then I think what you should always do is just mm -hmm. you know, start with the follow stuff first and kind of ignore yeah. it uh, first and foremost, because, well, I think, yeah, again, the, the, the bigger risk are the ones that are being followed, uh, mm -hmm. I, I would say. And that's kind of like, this is why I kind of go for a top-down approach because, I mean, mm -hmm. going through millions and millions and millions of links takes right. time and uh kind of again as an agency sometimes you're also just a bit limited in what you can achieve and i would say the yeah. biggest kind of return on investors um is, is certainly on on um the followings but i think yeah. um that being said the doing the same thing um and getting no followings in and have a look at them uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the second run uh, is something that i would that i would always do just to see what's sitting there and i think mm -hmm. what you guys are really doing well and what i think is, a, is is very helpful is if you then combine it with a whole bunch of the pre-categorized filters that you mm -hmm. already have yeah. you're relatively quick right i i would i would probably have to admit that we might not be as thorough with the no follow links than yeah. what we are with the with the follow links um but i think if you use no follow and go with the with the kind of big filters that are obvious again malware mm -hmm. and, and whatnot uh you mm -hmm. are relatively quick so i would i would think entirely ignoring no follow is not something that I would do. Yeah, okay. Yeah, something that, you know, I would recommend is to maybe, you know, if you have millions of no follow links, um, if 
there is a link and it is no follow. And the power trust that the page has where that no follow link is on is also a very weak one. Then we can maybe assume that that link would make or break it anyways. While yeah. the stronger no follow links, I think, exactly. yeah. are mo now more, um, more legible for maybe counting like they like they did in the past count for also for penalties when there was some some spam intention behind it you know all these no follow links from all the scrapers google may discount them we have a fix button to you know make sure that they are you know disavowed but uh, if i would place a no follow link by hand of course i would do it on a very popular page wikipedia mm -hmm. for example so you know if we say something like um a no follow link with some page power trust. You know, out of these, all these source pages, we only have nine pages to look at. And those would be the ones that you could then maybe, uh, you know, audit manually and say. Yeah, and you can there. even kind of use another filter, like, you know, uh, I don't know, the, the brand versus non brand to kind of make the lists even like more tailored. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, I think that, but that, I mean, that what, what it comes down to, anyways, right? You, you need to be smart with. With the combination of filters to to just be maximum efficient in terms of time so i think this is yeah. this is the entire trick behind link auditing if you so will i mean yeah next to yeah. understanding what the filters do obviously but <laughs> yeah well understanding <laughs> what you do usually helps <laughs> most, okay. most of the time that's true yeah awesome yeah i just see that we already got an hour past uh shall we do one more or do you have to run how much time do you have no i'm year? i'm good i have another i have another 15 that's fine Okay, so then the let's uh, uh, take a look at another one. Yeah, and, and, and Todd, when you see this, I'm sorry, I'm gonna do this understanding redirect chains as I promised, you know, it's here, but uh, you have to show up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I might record it anyways. Um, so uh, here's um, a very recent one here came in from, uh, Mas Magello Cots. I think this is the guy we we draw first, and he said, um, "My website is a real estate portal in Brazil. I count on some heavy competitors, like, or, or I suffer from some heavy competitors like Viva Real. And let me copy paste all of that because we should be looking at them. Mm -hmm. So Viva Real." I think that's how you pronounce it. Viva Real. I never heard of these brands, but maybe you? Nah. No clients there in Brazil? No, it's not really our turf, to be very honest. You know, all these, uh, of course, all of the real estate sites have their own problems now with COVID. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, Okay, so these are the big competitors here. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got some questions here. Oh, Rick. Rick Lomas is in the house. Sorry, Rick, I didn't see you. That's dot tk dot gg dot gc dot gq and dot ml are the free ones that are always chunk. Yeah, thanks for that, Rick. And I couldn't find that filter. And here's a question we didn't answer before that I want to answer right away before we start here. Um, you know, I always use my Markdown editor for notes here because you cannot show to the audience the questions that came up. Yeah. You should be able to, you know, click a button and say, this is the question that we're talking about. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're right. So what happens with a keyword domain link profile metric after you disavow all the problematic? I noticed that the percentage isn't changing. It stays the same, even though the domains uh, with keyword domain zero have been disavowed. Okay, Dragon, maybe you want to... You want to join us here, allowed to talk. Dragon, I'm not sure if you have a headset, but you're on now. While I, I go <laughs> to explain that, maybe you can, you know, fuddle around with it. So the question was, when we look at the link profile here, 
for this link profile, there is, of course, a lot of different metrics, but one very popular one is keyword domains. It's the number of domain ranking keywords or number of keywords or phrases that the domain of the link, where the link comes from, ranks. So for all the links that you have, for the domains of those links, we look for the number of keywords that they rank for. And in this example here, 27% of the links are on domains with zero rankings. So that's one, in this case, 415 domains. And the question is, when you disavow them, you will still see them in here. And I think, just, just do a quick look at them. We see here, well, one, two, three, four good ones. We're gonna disavow all but the four. So, filtered, disavow the root domain. And the question is, why do you still see them in the, in the link profile breakdown? And in this case, yeah, you see them. He has yeah. problems with his microphone. You just put it in the chat. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. And in this case, you see them because you're looking for them. You say filter those links that were the ranking keyword of zero. And here, we don't have a filter at all. So of course, we would still see them. Right now, there is no filter. And I think, Dragon, what you want to see is that uh, you have disavowed is empty so that you only look at those links that are not yet disavowed. And this would be the filter to use then. Disavow is empty. Or when you're here in the domains, of course, you can click on the not disavowed. That does the same thing. Not disavowed. Is disavow is empty or disavow is one of the undisavowed. We don't have any undisavowed links in here, but that would do the same thing. And then the link profile, right? So let's try that again. The link profile right now shows you all the links. And maybe a question that comes up next is, why don't I have the tabs in here that I have in the source domains? And I fully agree, these tabs and all these favorite filters should of course be shown here for the anchor texts and here for the fragments and here for the source TLDs, here for the source domains, and of course, the link profile, because the filters work globally in the system. We show them here and you can do it manually, but these shortcuts with the tabs are fairly new and we only attach them to the domain and the page and the link table. But um, I think they should be everywhere. I mean, because they're globally visible. Yeah, so I hope I could clarify that, Dragon. That's, uh, yeah, he is, uh, he is happy. Okay. Lovely. You got a thumbs up. Lovely. Okay, great. Yeah, and we already did a little bit of auditing here for I... Um, A-Mobile? A, 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 a yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. The other one's Me right. neither. <laughs> uh, take a quick look at the anchor text. Casa uh, para Aluka. So these seem to be the money keywords. Oh, yeah. here we got the dots. Thanks to Rick Lomas, we also have a, a dot filter. You know, here in the domains, we just say just dot. A favorite filter with rubbish that can always go. I remember Salando having some links, some very high profile links with a dot, but that was to actually get rid of an anchor text penalty 10 years ago. But nowadays I've not seen a good link with a dot only. <laughs> Just dot, okay. Just dot, yeah. I mean, this is in this account and what you see here is it just says anchor text equals dot. No. So that's... Um, just one of the saved ones. You know, uh, you saw my long list of saved filters here. Yeah. And if you just give it a favorite star here, mark it as a favorite, then it, it becomes a tab. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and we just disavowed all of them. Oh, I see we yeah, don't the filter. Have, yeah, we, we got the filter here. And, um, oh yeah, look at the keyword plot. <laughs> Here it is in the middle. That's twenty. There's a dot. <laughs> <laughs> there is a dot. Okay, I didn't see. Yeah, it I mean this this link profile, like at first glance, for me looks like really spammy. 
like the the anchor text distribution if you look at that it's yeah looks quite aggressive but look at the tlds we got com com brazil or at least not no not too crazy many of those uh spammy ones that ricky mentioned yeah no, but so we, xyz but yeah. yeah but we could do that you know doing a rule here like a uh, tld no um, source domain ends with dot ah, dot where is it did i just oh yeah dot tk <laughs> so I see 10 links. Yeah, I mean, that's not that much. You know, what I think is that these kind of sites, the scrapers and, and the ones with these crazy extensions, they also target a language. Yeah. Dot, dot. And when this is an, an uh, uh, is it Portuguese or Brazilian? Well, Brazilian. Brazilian, but it is related to Portuguese somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are some, some that you know. No, I know. Yep. Sorry. Or <laughs> this extension or this extension. Yeah, and so there are some from these top SEO directory .tk. Oh, Let's look at one of them. Maybe there is a PayPal. Oh. Yeah, that's done. Service has been this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not many, but mm -hmm. traffic simulator net. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Mm -hmm. What did you sort by our site wide links? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the, yeah, the, the, well, those domains that have zero rankings, we already disavowed. Let's look at the risk distribution here. No, that's actually a lot with a very low risk, which could indicate that they are really, really new domains that mm. we don't have yet in the training. Uh, very high risk links are here. Slow target websites. What's your opinion? You know, we got links going to really slow websites or slow pages on websites. Does that affect the link as well? because people coming via that link have a bad user experience? I was going to say, it's probably more user experience than anything, right? Um, does it affect the link? Pff, hard to say. I would, I would imagine measuring that at the scale is also a certain, certain resource behind it. But however, I mean, it doesn't hurt to look at it. I don't yeah. think it's going to be a crazy big issue. Uh, yeah. Certainly nothing that you can that you can blindly um, go for. So I think that yeah. needs to be kind of a manual review because I mean, we all know yeah. how, how slow some sites are that run heavy advertisement. So yeah, or even pages on some sites where exactly, a lot of the stuff exactly. is slow. Sections, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. agree. I mean, it's worth checking it out, but I think there's there's some some easier gains for this one. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, the, like the high risk stuff probably is something that you want to look at first. Yeah, the unavailable status negative essay but only six links yeah that's not many yeah. but i yeah well, i found really, like the anchor text distribution really intriguing with uh, like all the kind of uh, money anchor text there so was there actually a single brand link here uh, that's the well there were some somewhere in the cloud yeah small yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but here I think I saw, so there's one, see, uh, yeah. just straight below. And then one below the big orange one there. Yeah, there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interestingly though, they are attached with a pretty high risk though. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, maybe another directory. <laughs> and, and this Probably. seems to be some kind of side white here. Yeah. You know, when we just look at accounts, lakehollywood.com. So without looking, at that page. Mm, db4 stats, yeah. Right. That's just, uh, mm -hmm. What's db4? D4 
uh, old web tracking web analytics. I oh, like Abyss dots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Refer a spam. Well, we're just about that one. Um, to me, it seems a little bit like those websites where you do a link audit and there's no good link left. So shall we try it the other way around and see what kind of links, you know, may actually be still left. But we have yep. a, a, a source domain power, 22 domains. Okay. And we still got mega index in here. Berkeley. And then at our risk, mm. where we say, let's say below 500. No. Okay, here we got Berkeley, Guandi, Lopes, still a counter, bomb, stat counter, the feed burner plus, Google plus, or oh, wow, source pages. So here's 40 f extreme tracking. Yeah, okay. Extreme tracking, I think, was around when I was on the web. 19, yeah, what, 95 already. Quite or, a while, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's say yes. <laughs> but when I look at that now, that's, that's it. Now, this is not a really aggressive filter. I mean, power for the domain. No, you're right. If I change this to power trust, we might see a couple more. Yeah. But, but still not that many. Yeah. And, we and look still, at I, I would say questionable nature. Yeah, yeah. Um, so well, I would imagine that there's, that there's the, that the link profile per se is just not as strong as it needs to be. Mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. looking even at the competition. Yeah, yeah. So from all these, we got 119 links that have at least a source page power trust of one or higher, have a low average or low risk. Yeah, so there are, there are some. And these are the ones that I would give a thumbs up now from my very brief, very quick audit, First but brief also check, yeah. 119 yeah. URLs is something that you can go through. And all the other ones, and, and here we got some that are actually uh, removed. So when mm. we, that we may be able to win back. Active ones, we got 30. Oh. Out of a total of 2,470. And this is probably the reason here. You need to do some link building. You need to get some, well, maybe even content on the site that justifies building the links. And if you buy links, then for God's sake, please, if you do this audit, you can still simulate them. And remember the link simulator a little bit earlier for Hesap Kurdu? That link, that homepage link that I entered here has a simulated risk of zero. I knew that it has a risk of zero, however, because this is the national TV station of Austria. How this works usually is that you have this box and you have all these guys sending you a list of links that you could enter into the system. And I guarantee you out of a couple hundred link opportunities where you could get a link, only 10 or 20 are good ones with low risk. Yeah, are even worth, worth going for, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. are worth going for. And uh, we have clients that do this for many, many years and have established a routine with their suppliers, with their link building companies to tell them to use this simulator and then give them uh, the placement exclusively to mark these sites, to not use them for link building for any other of their clients and pay them three times the money. Of course, you have less links, but also less risk. And the crucial part here is to pay a really crazy premium on those links to make sure that other companies, other SEOs are not caught with you at some point. Because everyone who is not doing this kind of due diligence will eventually risk a penalty. And you don't wanna be caught in that net and that uh, just happens 
because other people get links or buy links from sites that you had links before. This is what we see and you want to avoid that. So this would be the best recommendation to get links built or, or paid for, even if you pay for it or, or have other kind of arangements. Yeah. But the exclusivity is the part that yeah, most of the you. people right. miss. Yeah, but this is yeah. the, the stuff that protects you. And I'm not talking yeah. about, you know, the next year. Um, we've been around in SEO for so many years. Imagine you would have done some exclusive deals, you know, when we started, Bastian. Imagine how much That would crap. have been good. Wow. Imagine how good, much. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so and, 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 but, but we have, you know, uh, in some really, really competitive niches, we got guys doing that. And this yeah. is something that you can do as well with link research tools and with all the work that you put in there. You know, you did all the work to train the system. Now you can utilize that simply for all the new links anyways. You want to recover or clean up before anyways. And then all the yeah. new links, you can check with that. And yeah, this is how it works. And of course, we got a separate you know, webinar and training and all these things for this. Uh, but I thought it's worth mentioning because just today, the guy said, well, I had no idea that you have something for building. <laughs> I, I thought you were only reacting and only to penalties. But uh, number one, that the proactive disavowing is something that I promoted for, I don't know how many years with link risk management, right? Bastian, yeah. when was that? 2013? Yeah, uh, something like this I would started. say, yeah. Yeah, the link building, that's the whole point that you do your link risk management so that when you do link building and you yeah, add you extra impact, links, right? no. that you don't build them on a toxic ground. What, what's the point of getting new links if uh, they just add more problems to no. it? And so it got a little bit more complex over the years, but uh, yeah, people are doing great with that still and in the right niches with the right tools and the right experts. Very true, yeah. And just today, um, John Miller tweeted something like, um, there is, there are a lot of different ways to get links that provide value on both ends. So you cannot say that link building per se is bad or black. -handed. Yeah, that's, that's probably true. I mean, it, it, as always, when we had it a couple of times, uh, you know, it depends on the industry, on the circumstances, on, uh, you know, the domain that you are building for or not building for. So I guess the whole bunch of variables, but I mean, this is not nothing really new. I just find it quite fascinating that um, people just try to find generic rules and generic rules in SEO just don't work. So yeah. um, language, region, size, um, history and whatnot are just the ones that I would say, um, define what works and what doesn't work or what the impact is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks like a great tool for gathering links. My only concern is, is there a risk that link building is considered black hat? There are lots of ways to work on getting links that are fine and useful for both the site and the rest of the web. To say True. all link building is bad would be wrong. There you got it. Yep. Uh, that would be a good new t-shirt. You know, the Gary shirts with ranking with our uh -huh. is really hard. Now mm -hmm. you got a nice, well, but it's fairly long. Uh, yeah. John, if you see this, maybe, you know, go for a shorter term, a shorter phrase. Christoph needs a shorter testimonial from you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But it could be a link building. That's fine. We got uh, yeah. those go. Those are the most popular ones. Fair All enough. right. So cool. it's 5.20 already. Um, do we have some more questions? No, that was it. Thank you very much, guys. I would say we call it a day. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Bastian, for being here next week. We do the same in German yep. markets for, of yep. course, other websites. And all of you guys who submitted the sites, remember, we got them prepared, we got them crawled, we got your disavows, we got them in the system, and we will look at them eventually. If you show up, we will look at them faster. Otherwise, just wait for it. We're going to do this every Thursday. And this is the LRT site clinic. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Ciao. So. Stop the recording. Ist ausgemacht.